Over the last few months, probably since the beginning of the year, I've been trying out different black and white stocks to try and work out which one is my favorite. Because color's always been such a big part of my work and I kind of use it as a crutch almost within my work, shooting in black and white makes me feel, you know, a lot more exposed. Like you, you really have to focus on your composition, your lighting, those other technical elements of photography. And because I do enjoy shooting color so much, Black and white's always been something that I've not really ever thought about using. It's always been like an afterthought for me. Usually I prefer to shoot in colour and then I'll just convert those into black and white if I feel as though that would kind of suit the photo better afterwards. And that's probably to do with the fact that I was a digital photographer before I was a film photographer. Maybe if I had done it in the other way around, then, you know, I would be more kind of used to shooting in black and white, used to seeing things in black and white. But because I do truly believe that removing colour, removing that element from your work does leave you more exposed, does make you have to think about those other technical elements more, I want to, I wanted to challenge myself to shoot more in black and white and see if that would make me a better photographer. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Cinesteel BWXX. Specifically, I'm gonna be talking about it in the 120 medium format, format, which is the latest black and white film stock that I have tried. You'll know already that I am a big fan of Cinesteel's films. You know, there. I've done a video on Cinesteel 800T, I've done a video on uh, Cinesteel 50D. The best way I can kind of describe their films is they're as fun to use as novelty films, but they are, they produce beautiful results enough that you could use it in like any body of work. Cinestill basically takes motion picture films and converts those films into films that you can use for still imagery. So as a little bit of history of Cinestill BWXX, this film stock is a panachromatic black and white negative film. It is actually the Eastman Double X film stock, which was an emulsion first used in 1959. And it was used to shoot Hollywood films, um, so films such as Casino Royale, um, Schindler's List, Kill Bill, many more films. We're using Kodak's Eastman Double X film to shoot parts or the entirety of their films. So in 1933, Kodak introduced Panatomic X, which was a slow speed 35 millimeter film stock and that served as Kodak's kind of introduction, its entry into the small format world of photography. Later they then developed Super XX which became Kodak's flagship high speed black and white film and that was used up until the release of Tri-X in 1954 and shortly after the release of Tri-X Super XX was discontinued in roll form so they still offered it in sheet form up until 1992 when it was fully discontinued but Kodak continued to reformulate Super XX bringing down the grain and refining it um, until they re-released it as the Kodak Eastman Double X in 1959 as a motion picture film. In terms of my personal use of the film stock, my first impressions after shooting just the one roll is that I really like the level of contrast that the film stock provides. It's something that I've been struggling to find with other film stocks, especially film stocks such as Ilford, HP5, which I know I've spoken about on this channel in quite a bit of length as to how I wasn't a massive fan of the level of contrast it did provide. It was a lot flatter than what I wanted, whereas the Cinesteel BWXX is a lot more contrasty. It does offer a lot more uh, differentiation between the shadows and the highlights. That being said, it does provide a higher level of contrast, but still allows the images to look soft, presumably because the highlights are quite soft. And knowing the history of this film, it's not really a surprise that I like BWXX so much when I do love Tri-X so much. Since the stock is recommended for both outdoor daylight use and um, under tungsten lighting, I would like to see how it performs in the studio under some different lighting conditions. On this day, we shot quite a lot of um, direct light and a little bit of overcast weather but it'd be nice to see how the film fares in artificial lighting. I'm also definitely going to pick up a roll of 35mm and see how that compares. If you've shot it before let me know what you think. Did you prefer the 120 or did you prefer the 35? Um, I know that the 120 has only recently been made available so you guys might have not used it yet. 
if you haven't, I definitely would recommend picking up a roll. I also want to give it a go uh, when it comes to street photography. I feel like the level of contrast would really work well with some scenes, you know, even on an overcast day. I feel like it does still provide that level of contrast. I'm going to roll through the images again, but let me know what you think of the images. Let me know what you think of the film stock. And if you've got any images of your own that you want to share, then drop me a comment and let me know.